Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how you take a derivative of something that is beginning to look a little complicated. We have two functions that are multiplied together. They each raise to some exponent, and then that's divided by another function that is also raised to an exponent, which means that we are going to have to use the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule all in the same problem. So how do you do that? Hmm. All right, let's give that a try. Y prime equals. So where did we start? So you can think of having the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to start with the quotient rule. In the denominator, we have a product. So when we deal with the numerator, we're going to then use a the product rule. And in all cases, we have an exponent. So we'll have to use a chain rule anytime we have to take a derivative somewhere. So starting out with the, the uh, quotient rule, we're going to say, all right, that means we're going to take the denominator, the function of the denominator right here. So that would be 2x cubed minus x squared, Oops, like that, uh, raised to the fifth power. So that's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Now the numerator is a product, so we have to use the product rule for that. So times the first, which is x squared minus 5 to the third power, times the derivative of the second. So there we use the chain rule, so it's 2 times x squared plus 3 to the first power times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x. Okay, now you may say, oh, I'm getting lost here. So we were using the quotient rule. We took the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. That was a product. So we took the first times the derivative of the second plus the second x squared plus 3 to the second power times the derivative of the first. So then we use the chain rule, so that means 3 times x squared minus 5 to the second power times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x. And now let's see if we're back on track. So we have the first times the derivative of the second, and the second is a product. So that means we have to use a product rule. So that means the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, minus the numerator, which is x squared minus 5 to the third power times x squared plus 3 to the second power times the derivative of the denominator, which is this right here, and we have to use a chain rule, so it would be 5 times 2x cubed minus x squared to the fourth power times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2 times 3, which is 6x minus 2x. And, uh, oh, no, that's 6x squared, because if I multiply the 2 times 3, I have to subtract 1 from the exponent, so 3 becomes a 2, and it's minus 2x to the first power. All right, now I think I'm good. Let's see if we're there. So here's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is the product, minus the numerator, which is right here, times the derivative of the denominator, all over the denominator squared. So that would be 2x cubed minus x squared to the fifth power squared, which means to the tenth power. All right. So, again, it's always good to go back and make sure we did this correctly. So, we have a combination of a product and numerator and a quotient, so we're going to use a quotient rule. We take the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is a product, so we use the product rule, minus the numerator, right here, times the derivative of the denominator, use a chain rule, all divided by the denominator squared, which is this right here. And so in essence, at this point, we have found the derivative of our problem. We probably now want to simplify it if we can, so over here, if you look what's inside the brackets here, is there something that's common? And yes, there is. There's an x squared minus 5, and there's an x squared minus 5, so that's common. We have a x squared plus 3 and an x squared plus 3. That's common. We have a 2x and a 2x, so that's all common, so we can factor all that out. So let's start with that. We'll do it one step at a time. So we have y prime is equal to 2x cubed minus x squared to the fifth power times, now what's in the brackets, let's factor out what's common. We could factor out a 2x, an x squared minus 5 to the second power, and an x squared plus 3 to the first power. So 
that's x squared minus 5 to the second power. We have an x squared plus 3 to the first power, and we have a 2x. All that is factored out, and then we have left, I'll use big parentheses, we have an x squared minus 5 to the first power. We have a 2, this is factored out and that's factored out, plus this is factored out. We have one of those factored out and that's factored out, so plus 3 times x squared, mm, not x squared minus 5, it's x squared plus 3, x squared plus 3, we have one of those. All right, so this is the quantity within the brackets, and we factored out what is common in these two terms. So remember, there's a term here plus a term there. What was common, we factored out. We still have to copy down what we have over here, so minus. Now, we have uh, x squared minus 5 cubed times x squared plus 3 squared times 5 times 2x cubed minus x squared to the fourth power times 6x squared minus 2x. And the whole thing divided by 2x cubed minus x squared to the 10 power. <clears throat> so we have one term here minus another term there. Is there anything that's common here? Uh, we have an x squared minus 5 to the second power. We have an x squared minus 5 to the third power. We have a 2x cubed minus x squared to the fifth power. We have a 2x cubed minus x squared to the fourth power. Uh, we have an x squared plus 3 and an x squared plus 3. That's common. And I think that's it. So as you can see, we can just continue to simplify this by factoring out anything that's common. So I'm going to use a, a different color to show you what I'm talking about. So we have this right here minus this right here. So is there anything that's multiplied together that's common? And so to begin with, I find this here. Uh, I'll just circle that, that part without the exponents. And we have the same thing. Uh, let's see here. 2x cubed minus x squared. We have the same thing over here. So there. So that can be factored out. Let me use a different color again. So we have an x squared minus 5 here. Now very good pen here, an x squared minus 5 over here. So that's common. So that can be factored out. And let me find a different color. What else do we have? We have an x squared plus 3 here and an x squared plus 3. So this and this can be factored out. And I believe I have everything. So let's do that. Let's factor those out. See what we end up with. So y prime is equal to, so we have a 2x cubed minus x squared to the fifth here, and we have a 2x cubed minus x squared to the fourth here. So I can pull out a 2x cubed minus x squared to the fourth. Have an x squared minus 5 squared, an x squared minus 5 cubed, so I can pull out an x squared minus 5 squared have an x squared plus 3, and x squared plus 3 squared, so I can pull out an x squared plus 3 to the first power. When I do that, what do I have left? In here, I pull out this to the fourth, so I have an x or 2x cubed minus x squared to the first power left. I pull out an x squared minus 5 squared, so that's gone. I pull out an x squared plus 3, that is gone. I still have a 2x. And then I still have this quantity right here. So I'll put another bracket in for that. So I have a x squared minus 5 times 2 plus 3 times x squared plus 3. Now, essentially, I could probably multiply this out and simplify that. So I can probably do that and go ahead. I will do that next. Then I have minus. Now I have this portion left, and I already pulled out these things right here. So what do I have left? I pull out a 2x cubed minus x squared to the fourth power, so this is gone. I still have the 5. I still have one of these because I only pull out x squared minus 5 to the second power, so that would be x squared minus 5. That's still there. I have an x squared plus 3 to the second power. I only pull out 1, so I still have an x squared plus 3. I still have a times 5. 
I pulled this hole out so that's gone and I still have a 6x squared minus 2x. <coughs> Excuse me. And the whole thing is divided by the denominator 2x cubed minus x squared to the 10th power. Now I notice that I have a 2x cubed minus x squared to the 4th power and a 2x cubed minus 2x to the 10th power. So this here cancels out with 4 though, so this becomes to the 6th power. That simplifies a little bit. I can continue on. I can go ahead and multiply these out and combine like terms. So I have a 2x squared plus 3x squared, that becomes 5x squared. I have a minus 10 and a plus 9, so that becomes a um, <clears throat> minus 1. So I can combine that a little bit if I want. And um, I can probably pull out some other things. I can factor out an x squared out of here. And so you can see you can just continue to simplify and simplify, but that's really an algebraic exercise. So I think at this point I'll just go ahead and stop and let you work on the rest if you want. But that is the derivative of our initial function. You can see that can get quite complicated and quite messy. And the key to getting the right answer is not to make a single little mistake, which is obviously easy to do here. So using color coding like this helps in saying to yourself the same thing over and over again. If I have a product and a quotient, and I'm going to start with the quotient rule, just say to yourself, it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. And of course, when you take the derivative of the numerator, you realize, oh, I'm dealing with a product rule here, so you have to apply the product rule. And I'm also dealing with the chain rule, so you have to use the chain rule and the product rule all at once here in that portion of the problem. All right, so give it a try and see if you can come up with the same answer. Good luck.